Our app has a fatal flaw, and there are two ways to fix it. Double up on code or refactor. Currently, the first option is nearly always the easiest, and yet counterintuitively also the hardest. The flaw is this. We let users select from a list of websites up here, the open button, but once they're on that website, they can get pretty much anywhere else they want to just by following links. Wouldn't it be nice if we could check every link that was followed so we could make sure it's on our safe list. One solution, doubling up on code, would have us writing a list of allowed websites twice, once in the UI alert controller and once when we're checking the link. This is extremely easy to write, but it can be a trap. You now have two lists of websites and it's down to you to keep them both up to date. And if you find a bug in your duplicated code, will you remember to fix it in the other place too? The second solution is called refactoring, and at this point in your Swift career is effectively a rewrite of the code. The end result should do the same thing though. The purpose of any refactor is to make your code more efficient, make it easier to read, reduce complexity, or make it more flexible. And in this case, the last use is what we're shooting for. We want to refactor our code so there's a shared array of allowed websites. So, back in Xcode, up where we defined our two properties so far, these two right here, We'll add a third one below containing the websites that are safe. We'll say var website equals apple.com and hackingwithswift.com. So those are the two websites we want people to go to. With that array, we can now modify the web view's initial web page so it's not hard coded. Down if you did load, we'll find when we load the initial URL. Here it is. We have HTTPS colon slash slash, which is fantastic. We're going to end the string there and append to it websites zero, like that. The first item from our websites array. So far, so easy. The next change is to make our UI alert controller use this websites array for its list of UI alert actions. So I'll scroll down to open tapped. And here is where we have our two websites hard coded right now. We want to replace that with a loop that adds one action for every site in our websites array. I'll delete one of these two and instead say for website in websites, start the loop, place that inside the loop and end the loop. And the title, rather than hard coding apple.com, we will say website. Use the item from our loop. So that'll add one UI alert action object for each item in our array. Again, not too complicated. The final change is something new, and it belongs to the WK Navigation Delegate Protocol. I'm gonna scroll down and find some space for a method, and I'll type web. And I'm looking for, this time, decide policy for, which decides whether to allow or cancel a navigation. I'll press enter to have Xcode fill in the method for me. This delegate callback allows us to decide whether we want to allow navigation to happen or not every time something happens. We can check which part of the page started navigation. We can see whether it was triggered by a link being clicked or a form being submitted. Or, in our case, we can check the URL to see whether we like it or not. Now this method expects a response. Should we load the page or should we not? But you'll see, there is no return value specified in here. It's not expecting us to send something back. Instead, we get given this thing here, a closure called decision handler. And we've looked at closures previously, and you may have wondered what's the point of them, why they're needed. And finally, here for real, we have a closure we have to specify, which is unavoidable. Now in project two, I talked about closures briefly. We had the ask question method being used for our closure for the handler for a UI alert action. And that's fine. As long as the method matches the closure, you're okay. By which I mean, takes the same parameters and returns the same return type. That was a great shortcut in project two. We could avoid using closures for real that time. But here we have to use them. We're being given a closure to run this decision handler. And we do need to do something with this closure. We have to call it saying yes or no. Now this might sound like an extremely complicated way of returning a value from a method, and that's true. But it's also underestimating the power just a little bit. Having this decision handler closure means you can show some UI to the user. Do you really want to load this page? 
or enter your passcode, whatever, and you call the closure when you have an answer. With a regular return value, we have to respond straight away, otherwise it will freeze up the whole code while our function pauses to get a return value. Now you might think that already sounds complicated, but I'm afraid there's one more thing that might hurt your head. Because we might call this closure straight away, or we might call it later on, perhaps after asking the user what they want to do, Swift considers it to be an escaping closure. That is, the closure has the potential to escape the current method and be used at a later date. Now we won't be using it that way, but it still has the potential to escape, and that's what matters. Because of this, Swift requires us to use the at escaping keyword when specifying this method. So we're acknowledging that the closure might be used later on. Now we don't have to do anything else. Just adding that one keyword makes Xcode happy and it'll be in there with code completion anyway. So inside Side Policy 4, we have to write some code here that will evaluate the URL to see whether it's on our safe list and then call decision handler with a negative or positive answer. Here's the code. Let URL equals navigation action dot request dot URL. If let host equals URL question mark dot host. For website in websites. If host dot contains that website, call the closure using dot allow and then return. But if after the if let, after the loop, we're still here, we'll say call the closure with dot cancel. Now there are lots of easy bits in there, but they're outweighed by the hard bits. So let's go through every line in detail to make sure you understand what's going on. First, we set the constant URL to be equal to the URL of the navigation. This is just to make the code easier to read. Second, we use if let syntax to unwrap the value of the optional URL.host. Now earlier, I said that URL does a lot of work for you in parsing URLs properly, and here is a good example. This line says, if there's a host for this URL, pull it out. And by host, it means website domain, like apple.com. Now we do have to unwrap this carefully because not all URLs have hosts. Third, we loop through all sites in our safe list, placing the name of the site in the website constant. Fourth, we use the contains string method to see whether each safe website exists somewhere in the host name. Fifth, if the website was found, we call our decision handler closure with a positive response. We want to allow loading. And then at that point, we can safely return from the method. Exit the method now, they'll continue. And last, if this if let fails, or if it succeeds, but none of our websites were found in the host, we will reach this point, line 85, where we call our closure with dot cancel, a negative response, disallow loading. Now contains is useful here, rather than using something like has prefix, because some websites like, for example, slash dot.org, they redirect to an m dot version of the site, m dot slash dot.org, for example, and has prefix would fail that test. At this point, your project's finished, so press Command R to build and run the finished app. Boom, there's apple.com. It loads now because that's the first item in our websites array. I'll press open and choose hackingwhatsapp.com, and that'll load instead.